Okay, so I think we're live. Hello, everyone. It's great to see you again today. So it's going to be a very interesting day, and we're going to start in just uh, a minute or so. But before we start, I want to make a small announcement. So here we go. So as I was telling you before, there is a huge hackathon coming, 0x hack. It's this May. It's starting roughly in a month. It's an online two-week hackathon, and it's time for you to learn more about it. So first of all, we're going to have a lot of great speakers. This is just less than a half of the list of speakers. We're going to have a lot, of, a lot of more speakers coming. But we have Austin from Ethereum Foundation that we're also going to host today. We have David from Ava. We have Alex van der Sander from Balancer. So we're going to have a very strong representation from the side of DeFi protocols. Uh, we also have um, Alex Zuchowski from ZK Sync. So we're going to have, uh, and also Jordi Bailia from Hermes Network. These are just some of the guests that's going to come to us to talk about layer two solutions. There is more coming. And we have Brantley from ENS. We have Kenneth from Ethereum Foundation that's going to be, he's going to be a judge. And we have Ma Maria Paula from Golan that we are also hosting today. And from our own backyard, we're going to have Tomasz Kolinko, the author of EVM, the compiler. So uh, I want to say the bounty pool is already $40,000, and it might grow, grow from here. All $40,000 goes as prizes, as bounties to, uh, to those who are going to take part in the hackathon. And we have some great, um, great partners, great sponsor. Uh, e we, the eForks, are one of the organizers, Maker, Polygon, Golem, but also Ethereum Foundation and ENS are joining, uh, joining the party. I think uh, there might be more sponsors coming as well. And for all, all of you who are not that familiar with blockchain yet, who are maybe joining our discussions, but don't feel like ready for programming, don't worry, you can join. There is a whole starter weekend. So we're going to have two days of workshops. You're going to learn about DeFi. You're going to learn about Solidity, writing and creating the apps, creating your own tokens, interacting with tokens, and all the tooling that is required to work with um, Ethereum. So don't hesitate. Join now. It's completely free. Just go to zerohack.dev, click join now, and you can sign up with your GitHub account, and off you go. I hope to see you there. And now back to Zero X Poland. So welcome. Uh, I would like to thank our media sponsors, CryptoDev.tv and Zrozumieć Bitcoina, who are helping us in our mission to uh, onboard more developers to blockchain and to Ethereum space. And today we have two extraordinary speakers. We today we talk about NFTs. So we're gonna have advisor at Golem Factory and founder and Eve Berlin, Maria Paula. She's going to join to talk about NFTs and the case for hyper tokenization to generate healthy ecosystem and attribute contributions. And next is going to be uh, live coding from Austin from Ethereum Foundation. And he's just going to show you how to build NFTs. Uh, live coding, no, no theory, just 100% practice. And he's going to build NFTs with Scaffoldev, which is a great framework for hackery and fast prototyping that he created. And yeah, I think we're almost ready. Just make sure you follow us on Twitter, Zurex Poland, and make sure you join our Discord, bit.ly uh, slash Zurex chat. And we're ready. So inviting Maria Paula to join us. Oh, thank you, Marek. Hello, hey. everyone. I am Maria Paula. I am an advisor at Golem. Golem is a decentralized uh, protocol for the exchange of idle resources, including computing power. And on the side, I'm um, also the founder at ETH Berlin and Department of Decentralization. In my spare time, I actually researched the intersection between blockchain and art, where, actually, where NFTs live in part. And I've written a couple of papers and articles about this intersection. How does it play with NFTs, open source communities, funding mechanisms, and beyond? So then I'll, I'll share my Twitter in case you want to check uh, my workout. 
But today I'm here to present you uh, the NFTs and the case for hyper tokenization and how to con build healthy ecosystems. And of course, I, at the end, I'm going to explain you how all of these actually is applied when it comes to our own community at Golem. So yeah, let's kick it off. So basically, at first, I want to define what is a, who is a creator, because we're going to talk about the creator economy. And uh, you might think that a creator is uh, someone that, you know, is on a more creative field like art or music. But actually, a creator can be anyone. There is no short answer, as my slide says. It depends very much on the context. For example, if I'm talking about Golem, I'm talking about creators. And creators happen to be software developers. And uh, so, you know, that is my context at Golem. And then, you know, you would have NFTs marketplaces where creators are, you know, artists. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a different way to frame it. This quote I am quoting here, it's from a super visionary called Paul Sappho. He uh, is a professor of futurism at Stanford and coined the term creator economy. And we're going to talk about that too. So uh, he says that he likes the term creator as this is a new kind of actor. Think that this uh, was said in 2009. So it was new and uh, this new kind of actor is doing something more fundamental than the mere sum uh, of simultaneous production and consumption. So that means that it goes beyond just producing something for someone else to buy it. And creators are ordinary people whose everyday actions create value. So, you know, ordinary people are just you and me. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being ordinary and uh, our actions do create value. So let's dive deeper into that. Some examples of creators, as I mentioned before. So, you know, the first one that comes to mind are artists. Uh, they can sell it to other or they create it for the sake, sake of creator, creating them. Then there's the fame or infamous content creators of today. Uh, you know, it can be YouTube, Instagram, podcast, whatever. Then I uh, reckon and I believe that writers and researchers like me are also creators because we are constantly producing content, whether for our own eyes or for others. Uh, and then finally, software developers are creators. Code is a creation. You, you know, you, you, you are able to uh, create different technologies so you know everyone can take part on this creator economy so these are some tools i actually pulled this chart out of one of the first uh, investment thesis on the creator economy that was by uh, you know the big uh, investor giant a16 set and they separated some parts of the creator economy and they gave some tools as example. You could obviously add here, you know, the tools that you use. Uh, um, of course, GitHub is one of them. So, you know, this is not an uh, this is not a complete list. It's just indicative. So, um, the creator economy again to Paul Sappho. Um, there is a, a really good seminar series that I actually want to recommend as well. If you like uh, people that have thought about the future and you like to learn how the thinkers uh, beyond technology, uh, behind technologies uh, are thinking and talking about the future, there is this uh, seminar series that it's turned into podcast that's called Long Now that focuses on long-term thinking. And it's where a lot of things that we hear right now, even open source maintenance, have been really stressed. So Paul Sappho in 2015 went into the Long Now seminar and uh, he started reintroducing the term creator economy, which he had already introduced, where he explains how we shifted 
from uh, mass media to personal media and how we create in the consumer, uh, how we create in the creator uh, economy and how we participate. Because a creator economy is not only about consuming, it's about creating and seeing others create. And this is a, a, a pattern that has been rebalancing the e macro economy, not only the creator economy. I'm repeating myself a lot with economy. Anyways, there is uh, some little history here. In 2009, the first mentions of the creator economy happened by Paul Sappho, who I mentioned already. They refer mostly to content creators. Uh, they alluded to the first wave of YouTubers and bloggers and most strictly to the WordPress platform that's not very much used right now, but it's super important. If you haven't heard, uh, well, WordPress, as you might all know, is actually one of the most uh, uh, prosperous open source projects as well. So it's super important. Then in 2015, Paul Sappho and Stuart Brand. Stuart Brand is the founder of the Long Now Foundation, which focuses on long-term thinking, discuss the creator economy. And then I wanted to, know, uh, to note here the creation of the ERC-20 standard and NFTs in 2016 onwards, because it continues till today, because this is where creators like you, me, and Golem that also uh, funded their uh, our open source project via crowdfunded, uh, crowdfunding in exchange for a token, uh, creators find new ways to monetize their contributions. Then in 2019, Liji from the uh, venture capital firm that I have mentioned, A16 set, uh, publishes the thesis on the creator economy called the passion economy and investing in these kind of platforms uh, that I showed on a few slides uh, before becomes uh, widespread. So fast forward to 2020, where, you know, NFT start uh, the hype and people start talking again about the creator economy and where, uh, uh, where alongside with the hype of NFTs, comes uh, as well the social token in fever, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. So you have different kinds of NFTs. And this, is, this shows actually the diversity of this third wave of creator economy that we're seeing right now. You have art NFTs. So, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, it can have always a concept beyond that beyond the creations, it can be music, it can be visual, it can be, you know, a scan uh, of a painting, whatever you want to, but it's strictly uh, tied to the artistic process. Then you have crypto collectibles, and I chose uh, the latest hype ones, the NF NBA <laughs> top shots. Sorry, I don't, I don't watch basketball, but I talk a lot about NFTs, so I get confused. And these are like trading cards. So even if there is some art on them and art direction, it, uh, they should be seen a little bit more like the cards that you used to collect before Magic. Maybe you collected Pokemon cards. I don't know. Then you have gaming NFTs. And these are NFTs that you can uh, get by playing games or that are that you can buy before to play those games or you know there's many different functionalities this is a screenshot from uh, axie infinity which is one of the hot games on ethereum and then here comes my favorite part you have different kinds uh, as the creator economy is so broad and nfts are so versatile that you can basically nft anything that you want I included an example from an NFT that I actually really like from um, a research institute that I've been following from 2018 that's called Planck. They produce non-fungible manuscripts called glyphs, which record innovative ideas and findings. And uh, the bearer of this manuscript that was auctioned a few weeks ago uh, will have helped fund an independent replication of a research study uh, by a researcher called Seth Robert. And um, the study is the appetite 
theory. So this is indeed very interesting. This is how to fund science in a way that there are no intermediaries. And, you know, it, it is paid in cryptocurrency, of course, but it's also it, it also has a speculative element to this because it was an auction. Uh, in the end, it sold for 24K USD at the time, and now it's a little bit higher. So, yeah, I, congrats to Molecule that uh, managed to, to buy that exciting thing. Then there's the NFTs that are uh, more related to you guys here. So uh, Bounty was a, a crowdfunding a mechanism for a, that a, for a group of people that are building permissionless reserve auctions for NFTs. And basically, the code base was minted as an NFT on a protocol that's called Zora and represented the first digitally unique and uh, collectible code base ever. The final co uh, code uh, was deployed to mainnet and used to auction already the NFT that I am showing here. If the NFT was sold, then uh, ETH would be accrued to the bounty tokens, which were used for the crowdfunding. That means that they, uh, the bounty tokens would, uh, would have value. And finally, uh, the bounty tokens, of course, can be traded like e any ERC-20 token or redeem for ETH. Uh, so probably you can go to Uniswap right now and find if there are bounty tokens because the auction ended <clears throat> last week. Then we have NFTs for writers. This is also a personal favorite. Emily Siegel last week uh, raised uh, via the Mirror platform uh, funds for her uh, novel <laughs> uh, via the novel token. And her novel was called Burn Alpha. So, sorry, that's my dog. Um, so yeah, this is another way to fund the creator economy, which I consider very, very cool. Then finally, uh, we're going to go to community uh, communities and tokens. And this is where I'm going to explain you how we use our token crowdfunded in 2016 that is fully in circulation uh, to grow our community. <clears throat> so in the blockchain ecosystem, which you probably most know about, tokens are not only used to fund the projects like the, during the Golem crowdfunding in 2016 that uh, allowed us to fund the entire development of our project, but also you, uh, you crowdfund in exchange for utility tokens that can be used to access platforms, to vote on a platform, uh, you can stake them, uh, incentivize uh, actors as node operat uh, operators, like in the case of Golem, or to pay for to pay for computations, also in the case of Golem. But also, you can design uh, incentive mechanisms on top of you know your community to allow these people, uh, the community members and content creators to earn something for their contributions to the community and to the project. Uh, so the tokens in this particular context to incentivize community actually serve a higher purpose. Uh, they tie the community. They make sure that the community sustainably uh, grows sustainably. They make sure that you know people are not putting themselves through great stress just for, you know, a simple contribution and they make sure to keep everyone happy yeah i know that money doesn't buy happiness but it does help a little bit so it's always nice to have some pocket uh, money extra for uh, your hard work on you know keeping a community that you love informed the cool thing about uh, online communities like golems is that anyone and everyone can enter a community and get rewarded for, for participating. Of course, it's not a magic formula. It's not uh, that you will enter any community and get rewarded instantly or for making a meme. Uh, some communities have incentive programs on uh, that 
are aligned with them and some don't uh, and some are very broad so incentives have dried up and that can happen and that's super normal but uh, the cool thing is that you will always be able to enter and co uh, contribute in a way or another and no matter your background then of course uh, because the token has speculative value and people like like to talk about the tokens that they hold so then tokens itself create trader communities based on the token price of course when you're working on, on building technology and you're very stressed about the code you don't want to worry about the price but uh, it's always healthy to look at the trader communities and see what they're thinking and their frustrations because that shows a little it's not fully indicative but that shows a little bit uh, how the uh, the broader audience uh, perceives your project and then finally there's uh, the asset class that's uh, social tokens uh, where it happens that a community an independent community independent from a project as well can have their own tokens maybe without having a project or a code base be behind them but they just want to have um, a token and those are called social tokens they're used to show membership to unlock features that are native to a co uh, to a community to grant benefits to the token holders you know for example uh, nft social tokens allow you to access different uh, special nft sales and promotions we won't delve into this because um, I want to keep this short I, and I want you guys to be building NFTs with Austin. So this is a subject for another meetup. Now, uh, how do I use tokens within the Golem community? We actually have been uh, have launched last year a program that we call a uh, GLM rewards program and we uh, we reward our community for many, many things, and we use different ways. One of the ways is using Gitcoin, which is a platform for open source developers that can contribute to bounties and uh, get paid for that. I, if you haven't heard of it, I really recommend you to check it out. And then uh, we have different categories as well. So uh, every one month or every two months, we actually a reward with GLM, which is our native token, to those people that give tech support in our Discord channel or our Reddit or our Telegram. Then we have, of course, uh, rewards uh, for content creators. Uh, so if you write an amazing blog post about Golem or uh, you, know, you create some art or some memes, uh, you can maybe uh, win one of the rewards of course we have limited slots so you know it's not that we're rewarding everyone that makes something as i said before then every once in a while when we want to enjoy and laugh and be uh, relaxed with the community we also launch meme contests and these get pretty wild and they're pretty funny and people also access some small glm rewards of course since we are building an ecosystem in golem and we want developers to build apps. Uh, we believe that the first, uh, the best way to kick off an ecosystem from scratch, like we did this year, was to actually reward people. So we basically created some bounties on Gitcoin and uh, we did some hackathons, like the one that we're gonna do with, uh, with ETH, uh, ETHWorks and MakerDAO in May, ZeroX Hack. And, base, and we, uh, we reward with cryptocurrency. Uh, you know, we reward usually with USDC or with GLM. Uh, we also reward uh, our uh, already existing app developers to maintain to a, up to a certain point their apps because we understand that app, uh, app maintenance and code maintenance is equally as important as building so if we want the project to continue we can assume that for a while we need to help these people until they can find a proper business model and maybe go free and find their own way uh, so yeah that's another thing then of course uh, since we have so many social media channels 
we also reward people to moderate Telegram. Um, this is not a very easy task because Telegram tends to be a, a little bit wild uh, from time uh, to time, but uh, you know we accept contributions in this field as well. Then there's uh, other kinds of contributions that uh, you know you can do. For example, uh, sometimes we need people to help us uh, get through uh, with user support through a specific period of time because one of us has gone sick and we always look into our community for those valuable uh, supporters that want to help us. And, you know, we will always give them a, a, a little price. Or if. So that's, that's also pretty cool that we have a community that's been with us for long enough and it's knowledgeable enough for us to trust them with tech support and we, you know, do, being some kind of very temporary replacement to, to one of our guys. And then, of course, the, you know, the main way to get rewards uh, in Golem is to run nodes. Uh, so basically, the software, uh, the platform allows you to get rewarded for uh, giving your computations to other people. But not only that. Uh, because we do have a lot of projects going on and right now we have a project uh, with chemi chemistry computations where we need a lot of com uh, of computing power we make sure that in or you know in the case of hackathons we also need a lot of computing power we make sure to create special programs where not only you get the reward from running the node that you would get uh, normally uh, in the marketplace, but we would add some incentive on top to make sure that our network doesn't stop, especially because we have just launched the mainnet. So we really want to keep it, make sure that it, it, it's alive until it gathers a steady base. Of course, all of these uh, token incentives eventually will be discontinued because this is all about bootstrapping a community from scratch and incentives in the blockchain space are the way that they are uh, tokenized. So it does make sense to talk, uh, to allow people to earn tokens, uh, maybe your own token, maybe a new social token, but it does make sense because all of the other projects are doing it. And this is a way that you have to also be competitive. So, yeah, finally, I, I just wanted to share with you a couple of uh, my favorite uh, contributions from the GLM Rewards program. Uh, so, art like, you know, you, you have the basic, uh, not, not basic, this, this one's actually very nice. Uh, you have art like Kenshin's in the photo. Then one of our community members, uh, his name is Anshuman is supporting his hackathon project. Uh, he won uh, the December hackathon with uh, a decentralized machine learning project. He's supporting it to mainnet and will be uh, possible to be reward, uh, rewarded for this. Uh, you know, basically he hasn't finished, but of course, if he achieves such a milestone, then we would be super willing to consider him for the rewards program. And Schumann also hosts a discussion to advance his project beyond the rewards. So he's also a content creator because he, you know, he creates threads where he wants to interact with people, where he wants to ask them uh, what do they need for their projects, what do they think of machine learning, and what do they think of his project. Uh, with uh, so it's uh, so. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is all very, very valuable. Then we have another uh, contributor. Sorry, my dog. Tupac, ven acá. Sorry. Then we have another contributor called Roger. Um, he works a lot on documentation and benchmarks for providers. Providers in the context of the Golem network are those that uh, provide their computing power to uh, software developers, which are the requesters that are building stuff and needing and in need of uh, of the computing power. So he has uh, Roger has been doing amazing work on providing more information, easy setup guides, benchmarks, and others, and that is really helpful because uh, you know 
our team can only do so much while focusing on building software. So these kind of uh, contributions to grow the network and to have informed users matter a lot. And then, of course, uh, we got Jasper as well, who moderates the Telegram. And uh, really, you know, I, I just listed a couple of the guys that I saw around in la in 15 minutes, but there's so much more. Um, you know, if you want to join our community, you can start in our website. So, yeah, finally, I just wanted to show you. We have a directory called Awesome Golem in the fashion of all the other awesome uh, repos. And in the Awesome Golem, we actually list all the community contributions. Um, of course, I just you know took a simple screenshot, but it would be great if you can go there and discover all of the tooling, the applications, and you know different guides that the community ha the community has put together for you to onboard to Golem. And by all means, you can join our community, uh, build software, play around with the. Uh, with the protocol or, you know, just chit chat with Anshuman about machine learning. Uh, uh, you know, you, you can have a lot of fun in our chat. The best way to start is actually on our website, golem.network, or you can also go to a, our Discord. Everything is linked on the website, including the GLM Rewards program. So yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much.